Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> Sorry, good afternoon, listeners. It's me, Suleiman Ben Suari, coming back on Facebook Live. Um, if you bear me a minute, let me share this on my ta- uh, on timelines, and I uh, will start the program. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, guys. Um, it's me, Suleiman Ben Swari, coming on Facebook Live. Um, very early in the day, and um, got some other errands around later. And it's just to come back after the outcome of the elections to um, have a conversation on reflecting on the outcome of the democratic process, which is our elections. And um, over, overall, uh, we can say it's well organized, apart from some areas of incompetency by the IEC, but we are not discussing that today. Uh, those things are to be dealt with another day in detail. Uh, but the overall handling of the process, uh, we are satisfied with, and it was very peaceful and very free. I'm not gonna discuss about the fairness or not, uh, I don't want to lengthen the dis- discussion, but there are many things that make things something fair. But let us talk about our collective. We want to take responsibility of, of what has happened. We should take responsibility of what has happened. And um, uh, as our individual and collectively, we should take responsibility. That's where I want to emphasize on. I am going to point on to certain things and, and, and relate it to the conversation. But as the process is, is again, what is our common interest, our mutual interest, creating the greater good? What is national interest? That's where the conversation will be and about our own contributions and the way forward. And um, the, uh, the nature of the peacefulness, we credit to the people, we credit to the leadership, and we credit to the security forces. And the people, obviously, uh, are the overwhelm me the people I mean the factor that contribute to the peace of, of a nation and they have and the, those people to have leadership and those the, the leadership of the people I mean leading the people to have a greater responsibility and a duty and an influence in how they behave 
and we have seen all this uh, being conducted well. But the security forces have a responsibility, a duty, um, to serve uh, in this aspect, and they have delivered too. They could have provoked, uh, and in which we don't expect, but it could have happened. We have seen it in other countries. Then um, Gambia have to say bravo for themselves. I mean, we came to, I mean, collectively and delivered this. This tells us we do have a history of democracy because the nation was founded on democracy. It was founded on, on, on a multi-party system. It's easy to reconnect to that if we work hard, but we have to reconnect and do it properly. For example, the why Guinea Conakry is struggling. They don't have the history of democracy. The nation was not founded on democracy, was not founded on multi-party multi, multi, multi -party democracy. Then Gambia, we have hope, uh, we have a foundation, and we need to build on that. And what are we reflecting on? We are reflecting for the future. This is a process, part of the democratic process, in order, we, are, we all go into it, supporting different parties, or different interest groups, whatever you call them, in order to decide how the country is governed. It's for the future. Now we have to reflect on that future from this outcome. The, let's start with the citizens, ourselves, myself. We have to reflect on this, on our contribution, our footprints, past, and what we want to do in the future. That's for us to do. We should reflect on that, on how do we impact, how do you, we personally contribute to the national interest, regardless of who we voted for, who we supported for, where we belong. This is something every citizen should do. And what this national interest is, is the peace, security, and the progress of that nation. Then it's accountability, justice, um, and, uh, and transparency, all this factors. It's about holding accountability and participating and participating in making sure we have a good governance and rule of law. These are contributions that we have to continue to do and, and, and so on in our measures. But one thing too, what we should reflect on is our prejudice. Our prejudice. This prejudice might come from, from different reasons, but mainly due to probably being defensive, we are defending ourselves or defending what we, who, where we belong or, or the party we belong or tribe or whatever you call it. In, 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 in doing that, we were not measured and, and we might, in fact, torn to be prejudiced. Um, the way we conducted ourselves, the language we used, where, was it respectful enough? Did, did we go out, I mean, I mean were we so angry? Were we so passionate? about what we're doing and we, we, are, we did not come out or what we wanted to say did not come out well. This is something we reflect on. And if that person, if you offend collective uh, people or individuals, I mean, I think you should reflect on that. And if you believe that you do, I think you owe them a, a, an apology. And if, I mean, in that sense. But again, it's not only reflect, reflecting on that for the apology. It's for yourself to make you better, and for yourself to impact well in what you represent. Yourself, and if you are in a political party or where, wherever you think you represent or what you represent in that society, you do it well. This, this is the importance of that personal reflections. Those prejudices, we hold them in different ways, created by different factors. Some are prejudiced because of what they perceive. It's not facts. They are perceived from others. And all these things can create prejudice. And what? It blinded us as well. It do blind you. And you do blind you in your judgment and make you miscalculate, which is not to your interest and not to the interest that you represent your party or, or, uh, or group you represent. So that you can impact we reflect again to look at our track record, what we have done, how we impact, and to reassess how can I contribute or continue to contribute and, 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 and to impact well for the greater good.
End of the day, we can belong to different political parties. But one thing we have in common, or should have in common, is how do we create a better Gambia? And this is where, when we do our reflections, this is where it goes. That's where we, we, we should be. And um, that's why it's important to have that re reflection. But again, we move on to, as I said, I don't want to keep it long. We move on to the political parties. Again, it's us in political parties, as members, as executive members, or, or responsibility supporters. Fan, fan, we are the ones. Citizens are the ones in political parties. But political parties, we address them as an entity, as an organization. And very important, because this is through these vehicles, political parties, we go through. We go through in order to create what we want to create. We have all sets, I mean, belief in, 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 in a party that represents our interests, or, or we believe that Gene Okuna create the greater good. That's why we support them. We go individually support them. Yes. Political parties might represent an interest. Individuals, we have seen the the the, pl 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 the proliferation of political parties and everything else, and and, and or candidates or aspirants and stuff like that did happen. But let's just keep it narrowed down to uh, parties that have gone through the vetting process, through the vetting process, and 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 end up uh, being candidates or some some potentials. Let's keep it onto that. And I think. All political parties, all political parties or aspirants who are genuine in uh, taking part in this politics need a time of reflection to ask themselves what have happened, what have gone wrong, what have we miscalculated. But individuals too supporting political parties to understand your party because in order for you to able to hold your party accountable because every party would need to be reformed. Every party would need to reflect again, review, and see how they can do something best. In this case, let's start with the UDP. The UDP need a time of reflection on having the structures they have, having the mobilization they have, having the capacity they have, having the resources they mobilized, has something gone wrong? What have gone wrong? There are strong perceptions. How do we address these strong per perceptions? They will have to review. And think of how would they move forward. And if they have evidence that the election has been rigged, it's on to them to produce that evidence and take it to the justice. So far, that's what they have, a uh, case they put out. The statements are clear. I'm glad they have not called out for anything but they call out of following the rule of law. The rule of law. It's the responsibility of every citizen, especially a stakeholder that have taken part in anything and perceive or have a strong evidence that it's not been done right. That's very important. They let them follow the due process and, and, and the outcome of the due process um, to what would, 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 would be what, what, what we have as in good governance. I'm glad it's not like Senegal or other places where people are called out in districts unruly, but to follow the rule of law. Just to follow the rule of law. Why is it important? Why am I against people that say they should not follow the rule of law? Why not? Why would you tell anybody not to follow what the Constitution dictates? If you are not happy, the Constitution said this. The law said this. That's rule of law. In fact, it's irresponsible and wrong for any institution or person to knowingly know that a crime has been committed or a fraud has been committed and not stand up to the accountability. 
That's why I said it has to be done responsibly. It's been done responsibly. We, we wait. Let them wait for that outcome. Gambia would wait for the same outcome. But that should be categorical claim. It's not about that you challenge. If they believe that they are done wrong, they have to challenge. They should challenge. It's for them to challenge. If some other people think different, they have that right too. But say difference, uh, we're not challenging. As we said, the process, the process as, as we know it is transparent. If any, anything is rigged, there should be an evidence to it. We have a very transparent, competent uh, election uh, process. That's why I am still in favor of, of the process. Yes, there are areas to be adjusted and things to be done, but uh, doesn't mean that we have to throw away the marbles or anything. I'm happy with it. Counting of, of, the, of the sports is there and other things, but it doesn't mean that rigging cannot happen. But if it happens, there is somebody or, or there's a mechanism there to prove it and then go on and prove it. We support that. But the most important thing is the reflections. They have to reflect on all this to make sure they're doing it right. They have the evidence and they go through it. And to continue, continue, continue to appeal their supporters. I mean, to, 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 to stay fast, to, stay, to be steady fast in holding the discipline that is required. Again, the UDP have to think of what is going to happen in the parliamentary, what is going to happen in the local government as every political party. We move on to the PDOIs. PDOIs have a time to reflect. Time to reflect. And I can see supporters saying that that we we said it. You end up I mean Barrow would end up winning because of the Gambians don't like um um U UDP or because UDP is UDP is divisive or whatever it is. But I think that's a very, very, very weak position for any political party to take. Why did I say this? Every political party should be aspiring and standing on their own and call on to their supporters to come out and vote for them. Because I have not seen uh, PDRS ask their voters to go and support uh, um, MNO, I mean, vote for um, MN Barrow. I have not seen that. They went out there, they mobilized, they used resources, they used their structures to mobilize to be vote, voted for. Now, Peter I need to reflect on this. Why are we not the alternative? Why are not the alternative? You have a very good candidate. You have a very good political party. You have a good informa information, everything. Why not? Why not? We had these debates before. Remember, Peter I.S. was established during the First Republic. They have a brand. They've been around for a while, for a long time, longer than any other political party today. Now they, sh they should look at themselves, not to look for uh, at, um, distractions or anything. To say, why are, not, why are we not the movement? To build an, as an anti-establishment. To so that the establishment, be it PDO, uh, be it UDP, be it Barrow, would be rejected, and parties would support us, or the people would support us for us to be. That's the responsibility of the PDOs. For it has never happened in any country. What happened in the Gambia, where political party leaders have lost uh, the the. Candidates have lost their own constituency badly. Badly. That's a reflection for all of the political parties. Especially uh, PDIS and the other parties. For the overall to score uh, out of almost a million votes, 900,000 votes, to score 30,000, that should be a reflection. That should be a reflection. Remember, if UDP can put themselves in a position 
to, to, to make believe for themselves, make believes because even everybody believes that it's either them or Barrow. Why, how did they manage that? Why not Peter I.S. manage that? It's us not. I said this here before, I'm not going to go deep in, in it again. Elections are won by establishment or anti-establishment. How do you uh, win an election? The strategy is if you either compete as an establishment party or an, as an establishment, how do you become an anti-establishment? There are strategies to that. And you have to hold the, if you are an anti-establishment, you have to hold the anti uh, you have to hold the establishment accountable. That's, that's, that's the parties that perceive to be establishment in order to win. We have, that's how elections are won everywhere else. It's either the establishment or the anti-establishment. We move on. GDC. And much they need to have a reflex, um, um, a reflection. My prejudice with GDC as my prejudice with APRC my prejudice uh, 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 with, with NPP is not hidden. It's right in the open there. And for one thing and one thing alone is the association with Jamme. And for the uh, NPP is on, almost for everything else and association with Jamme. But for the GDC, from the beginning, I said, and I continue saying it, and, and it continue now, and I don't think it's a sustainable entity. But they have to have a reflection. And this reflection should come from the people themselves. Genuine people, executive members, I know, know should reflect on this. Are they going to continue to be led by an individual that just takes decisions on how it suits him? Is it sustainable? I think they have need to have a reflection on that. On, on the NUP, this is the reflection NUP should have and other polit new political parties should think of again. What does it take to be a viable political party? What do does it take to be a sustainable political party? What does it take to be a sustainable political party? Is it sustainable? just to form a political party. How do we form a political party that's sustainable? This preferation of political party, is it sustainable in our electoral system? If we mean, genuinely mean to impact, how do we impact? Are we to come al uh, across as um, anti-establishment parties to come together, to form a movement of anti-establishment to, to, to challenge the establishment? But separate entities, how long is it sustainable? Would you be there to be in 30 years as a political party? What impact would you have? The members and the parties should think about this, but not only them, as I said, even the new political parties. Because the, 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 what NUP went through, CA would have encountered the same thing. Because we have seen individual political parties, what happened to them. What happened to the PDIS? What happened to GDC? What had happened to NUP? What have what happened to SFA? What have happened to any new political party that went it alone? We said I said it here. Any the race have been determined because we did not have an anti-establishment candidate. The race was already determined to be two two horse race, but. Three horse rates could be created from the other parties. To come together and it will be a three horse race better for our democracy, more challenging. Then the third horse race can act as the anti establishment against the establishment UDP and, and, uh, and, and NPP. But no, why could they not come together? We have to reflect on that. They have to reflect on that. Whose interest was it? National interest was it? Why can't we find mechanisms and ways to put our personalities, to put our personal interests and have the collective in interest, the greater good, and come together? It failed. Now we cannot just go and blame the people. We have to blame the leadership for that too. Why did they fail? 
that reflection is needed on that. Again, NUP disseminated. Is it sustainable? They have to reflect on that. What it takes, to, what would it take for them to be sustainable? Just ask the, the CA and others. But how well are these parties going to do in the parliamentary? They should think about this. Because the reflection of the votes, generally, that's what happened. That's the culture. Once you win the elections uh, comfortably, means that parliamentary, the, the same thing will be replicated. And that means that the establishment, uh, if, if, I am saying if, reflection are not done till parliamentary time, and, and make sure whatever went wrong to be ratified, the same thing would be replicated and NPP would carry the light number, I mean, bigger majority in parliament and that would be disaster for Gambia. Because we are going to go into more, they, they'll be more comfortable, more complacency, they do whatever they want. Because they have parliament and they, that will reflect in the local government as well. Now that's why even all these parties need to reflect on this. Think of parliamentary. It's two months away, three months away. Parliament, how are we going to do that as well? We, it's very important. If you end up not, if you do badly in the uh, presidency and do badly in the parliamentary, you think where your voters will be? You think your parties will be sustainable? These are the reflections in uh, political parties look at. The same thing with SFR. Again, we cannot blame the issue on or because of the politics is divisive or because of they rejected UDP, they went to battle. There's a factor of that. There's a factor of that. Don't take it away. A big factor of that. But let's reflect and to be truthful to ourselves. If our own heartlands our own, where we born, grow up, where we expected to receive, we done badly, disseminated. What future do we have in politics as a candidate? In, go, go and check in Senegal. Go and check in Senegal. Go and check in any country. Yes, they will do badly, but where they come, the region they come from, they will do fantastic. Be it Casamas, be it uh, Dakar, be it Nyoro, be it wherever they, the candidate comes from. They, 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 they usually have four candidates or five candidates go run for elections. And it reflects again, the, they make sure the parliamentary, it, it reflects on their uh, performance in the elections, presidency, it makes sure the, 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 it reflects on the local government. Now, these are the facts. Now, you ask yourself, what will happen to the other political parties? What will happen to the opposition if this is reflected, the results, these results are reflected in the parliamentary and the local government? But that will come to the Gambia. We check ourselves the Gambia. Now, if that is the case, As I said, you look at SRFAL, you look at um, NUP, tells you what the new political parties, the aspirants, CA and others that wanted to run, did not run. What would have been their fate? Their fate would not have been different. I think they have need to reflect too and think of how do we do go forward. Is it sustainable? But generally, we have to reflect too. A genuine political party, I'm not talking about the people that go aspirants to build political capital for self. I'm talking about the CAs and other NUP, the genuine political parties that are running into to make to have impact to be something. Let them look at their how they are constituted and and whether and, and strategy and whatever wise in going into this. We should not just be lazy to say that no, yeah, because it's only two parties that are likely to win. That's our own creation. We are the leaders. That's our own creation. Why didn't we have a third party? Why do we have a fourth party? And we'll talk about that I mean, in a final conclusion. We have to look. Gambian intellectuals, Gambian consciousness, why? 
Why is this happening? The citizens should ask ourselves, why two political parties? We say it's only two political parties, but then is this our history? Is this gonna, if this is our history, is this gonna continue? Then what's the point of forming many political parties? Then why not rethink this then? How can we bring another third force? How can we, this thing, what do we have alike? But again, political parties should be positioned to create this. How can I position myself to make sure to create a, the leadership to come around me to form the anti-establishment? That should be think about. The other thing, again, um, will be the incumbent. You see, if incumbency succeeds, it's up to the people. It's been proven. Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, anywhere else. We give examples. But if Gambia want to defy that logic, that's Gambia. We have to take responsibility. The establishment should, could, should, could, should not have won these elections. But if we are continuing to be divisive, divisive in all angles, what do, what do others we make of lazy? Yes, let's blame uh, yeah, let's blame UDP. Ah, it's a uh, let's blame an NPP. They are they are the two parties. But what else are you doing? Why are you in politics then? Retire. Retire. Go uh, go for civil society then. You are in politics to be in poor position to win. If any politician come, oh I'm not into win then then you you shouldn't be in politics. Again. That should be the incumbent. That's why I said I reserve the word fair. It cannot be fair. It can be free. It can be peaceful. It can be free. The fairness is very difficult. That's what we call the incumbency. We have to have a political maturity to a level where we can have that fairness. We, we, we have seen that unfairness. State resources. You think where all these resources came from? You think people that give money to NPP are doing it for, for Allah? Or doing it for love of Gambia? It's not. It's an investment. They're going to reward, uh, rip their distance. As they do for other political parties. But the biggest is NPP. Because they, why? Why? Because they have the state. They have the income. You think other resources that they do, other deals they do, other corruption, you think where they, they reinvest to keep state in power? Cannot be fair. But the other measures of fair, we can talk about it. Now, let's come down to the people. Again, as people, it's our responsibility. We are the ones in political party. If the system did not change, we did not change. The, we, the people, we have leadership. Until we move away from divisiveness, what it creates, creates more prejudice. Most people pointing out prejudice, they prejudice themselves. Why they are they prejudiced? Maybe for different reasons. Probably they've just been de defensive and they become an abuser themselves. They were defensive, that's why they become prejudiced themselves. But, um, some people are, uh, are, are prejudiced because of they believe people have strong perception on them or, or we, we, we did it as reality of what what it is rather than go out there or to clear themselves to win over people that's it is to win over you make yourself to be victim or or, or town, stand out there to say i'm going to defense and defense you become a prejudice but what becomes again when you are prejudiced you are not balanced and your uh, judgment is is clouded and, and that's why you might take decisions that are wrong. But for the sake of country, that's why we reflect as individuals to measure ourselves on the decisions we have taken in the past and the decisions we are about to take in the future so that we have it right. Because generally, as I said, generally, tribalism is not our problem, generally because of what we when we are in love when we choose our love when we go to ceremonies what we share our families we are the intermarry and everything is not our problem but the perceptions and the the the, the politicization of tribe and others are our problems not worse as in senegal even in in africa we are seeing 
Now you see, we are seeing the battles in Senegal. Elections are not even there. You see the, how many people have died yet in Senegal. How many people? And the tribal undertones are there. But it's worse in other African countries. In Kenya, how many people? Then we should not allow to get there. There's something unique about us. We keep it that way. We have our good, we build our good government, rule of law, and we follow that. But we have to work on ourselves to take this out. To avoid it being crystallized. If it does, that's where we have a problem. And it's manifesting now into areas that we are wanting to take the factor. Oh, it's the only factor. It's not the only factor. There are many factors. But it's a major factor in how the outcome of this election has been. White I said it's not the only factor. Then UDP should not have lost according to the results in certain places. In fact, they should have got more. Then it's not the only factor. And we remember again, Adam Abaro, as we know it, is not any other tribe but Mandinka. And people around Adam Abaro, most of them are Mandinkas. Then it's not the only other factor. We have to think of the factor of opportunism. Opportunism. Most of the people talking about this too are not other tribes. Some of most of them or some of them are Mandinkas. That is about opportunism as well. And this is, I mean, it's about politicization, it's about a lot of other things. They do it because they want rewards, they want to be this and so on, and they go and sell it. And ignorance, yes, our people, ignorance is part of it and it happens. But now, let's reflect on the government. Remember, this is the same government we have. Now, do we expect to have a better governance from today? When we inaugurate a new government, do we expect to inaugurate a better government? If you believe in that, I mean, I don't know how do you think. I'll tell you, we are going to get the worst government from Adam Abao. Because we, this, we just, Gambia, by this vote, means that whatever you have done, especially a landslide is good it's excellent and he's gonna do the same thing and worst of it and it will just go on and get worse and knowing that nobody is gonna hold me accountable i go to elections i win elections gambians are easy to fool gambians are easy to be dealt with that's what we have done the the winning of this democracy would have been changed then any person that wins an election again and become a government would realize that if I don't do things right, I'll be punished. Just as Barrow was punished. But not I'll be rewarded. Not I'll be entrenched. What have we created? We give him approval rating. We approve him. Now we give him opportunity to entrench himself. You see, the first time around, he could not entrench himself. He came to a coalition. He was kind of handicapped. He didn't have a political party. Now, he believes he has a political party. He have everything it takes now. It's me they voted for. It's my political party. I created this. I created movement. I created that. Now, I can do whatever. I am powerful. He, the guy even said that when he was given everything. Said that he did everything. Now, what do you think he's going to say? You understand the mindset of the person? Understand the mindset of the people around him? His incompetency, the corruption and everything, you think anything is going to change? He's going to be richer, wealthier. The people around him would be the same thing and go on. The cabinet he's going to establish would be the worst cabinet. Because of he's going to reward people. He's going to reward businessmen men that put him there. He's going to reward other people. That's why we should think of this and prepare for that. And the best way to prepare for that is parliamentary to make sure we have the check and balance. Local government, we have the check and balance. Rather than sit down here, uh, whatever it is, go out there, make sure you hold on. If these results are replicated, that's what the problem will be. It's going to maintain the, this is the same cabinet. It's going to maintain the same agencies, nothing will change. I mean the same cabinet. He might remove Demba and bring in Party. He might remove Aishatu and bring in Fatu. But what characters are they? Not their competency, not anything else. You, the infighting will continue. The, 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 the thievery will be worse or we will get away with it. 
let's steal more. We don't care about the people. It's time of elections, let's go to them, give them back of rice. Time of elections, let's go campaign divisively. Let's tell them we are all, I mean, they are all tribalists, they are all divisive. Let's listen, the other parties who would follow us. But they would not talk about us. They would just concentrate on themselves. This was a They were not holding it accountable. It will continue. The advisors will be more. <laughs> and will be, in, uh, you think she's going to get different kind of advisors? No. We'll be more unenrolled and they will do whatever they want. They will be rewarded. Our, the, our relationship with Senegal <laughs> is going to get worse. And I am saying this, let me put it clear. I am saying the, the relationship we're going to have with the mafia from Senegal. I have no problem. And I'm, I'm a champion of Senegambia and regional integration in, in the right way and manner. I'm not saying that I am anti-Senegalese or our anti, uh, anti in, in, I am for integration in the future. But have to be a uh, walk on on, on a, not to be full. But you know what is happening already? Our resources, our everything, businesses and everything, and strategically our 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 uh, our development is not prioritized for our sovereignty to be maintained and everything else. We building road and bridges. We don't think of uh, the, the the national security implications and all the things and investments will come in from anywhere. The, anybody can supply us oil. Our oil rigs. We don't even know how the oil rigs have been managed. I mean, we don't know anything about this because the government doesn't care. Let them just have a slice, small slice of anything, they are okay. Because for them, they are billionaires, they are millionaires, that's what they want to do, and they will be entrenched. This is another thing we should be thinking about. It's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. <laughs> the reforms. <laughs> you think, you think if parliament is captured, what reforms are you going to get? Nix. Worst, everything. The constitution that going to be introduced will be Barros constitution to entrench him. Any clause, anything that should, I'm not talking about uh, the, the retroactive clause, I'm talking about any reforms, his powers, anything would be according to him. Because he will have majority in parliament if it is continued. You expect any laws to be done right. Any laws passed in parliament would not be, would be measured according to how does it support Baron? How does it support his government? Remember the little we have was because of, it was the beginning. Now he's going to, he's going to select the worst justice minister, uh, uh, anybody that would do what he wants. Worst finance minister, worst of anybody that would do what he wants. He will never appoint competence or, 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 or that someone to do the right thing. We have to look at again uh, the security sector reforms. You think it's going to happen? No. If things were going to happen, he would have done them. He had the powers. He had the rest of everything to do. It. it did not happen. We have seen he sabotaged them. The security sector reform was not happen. And down the line, that would tell you that the country will not be sustainable under Barrow's government. Something will give. Something will give. You think the civil service reform is going to happen? No. Civil service reform will not happen. Take that to the bank again. Anything that happens would uh, to do is to enter in power. Appointments and anything would be to enter in power. You think corruption is going to stop? No. Corruption will be on steroid now. Land will be taken anyway. Land seizures would happen anyway. Any contract Gambia government take over would be kickbacks to, to, to nobody's decision. Harding guys and others will be richer. They entrench themselves. That's why I said there were many interests that fought this election. It's not only about tribal perceptions. No. That's a lazy way of looking at it. It's a factor. But not the only factor. The personal interest. And because of this personal interest, they will use the tribal factor to, to try to crystallize. 
and they will continue to do that until health break loose we lose our sovereignty we should not allow it that's why we need to reflect <laughs> you think the cartel <laughs> you think the cartel is gonna stop the cartel will just say this is our country our man have managed to stay with every scandal we brought to him he managed to stay now the cartel the cartel would be even more empowered this is a safe place to be we have a government here a resemblance of democracy money laundering cartel will continue um, every other corruption, the fertilizer we expose, the cartel we expose, the petroleum. You think this case is investigation will happen? It's dead. Barrow continue dead. Parliament comes, nothing will happen. Nobody accountability will happen. It will continue. It was. Is that sustainable in a country? You think there will be anything positive for the youth or anything else? No. Would that be an opportunity? Why would you? It's already happening. If we do not do it, let's reflect, reflect. Let's reflect on how these are the issues we have a problem with. It's not tribe. Yes, there are a factor of that, but we should look into ourselves to solve that problem. <laughs> Our priority would not be national interests. The priority would be to entrench Barra. Priority would be to entrench the, the cartel, the state capture continue. That's what's going to continue. And finally, our freedoms will be tampered with. Take it to the bank. Our freedoms will be tampered with. It's an, and the opportunities would entrench. How would our freedoms be tampered with? If anybody that speaks out journalists opposition and anything they'll pick you up nothing will get come out of it because of what they know nothing will come out of it we will stand and blame every, each other yeah opposition will then be a problem a journalist here then live in a civil society here then live in or what bakaula then be a problem what sukuta then ni jambu they will we will keep on being divisive and divisive and that they're happy and they will pick us one after the other, one after the other. Our, 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 our we already seen it. We seen the case with Nene Fred, Fred Gomez and his company, the company he works for and that property. We seen the problem. We have enough evidence, but we look the other way. We see what's going to happen. And that's how it happened. And then look at Senegal now. That's what happened to Makisal. Now he's doing anything. With, with the institution Senegal staff, we think Gambia, what's going to happen? It's just going to be like that. How many people are getting killed and everything else? Because Makisal is just because of corruption. It started with corruption, then it ended up with this. It's the other way around. Because if Gambia came through the gun, it's easy for him to continue. He has to do that in order to stay. This guy come to the ballot, he has to do the corrupt, continue corruption, divisiveness, and for happen. It's for Gambians to keep that. The judiciary, you think this judiciary will continue it, it the way it is? Now we we all are happy that they are they are effective. But if Barrow stays, now he's entrenched. Now if any chief justice continue to give him difficulties in the courts, any judges continue, you'll be fired. Remember, remember the powers, he still has the powers. This is something we should think of. The justice will go. But finally, let's think about this. Our history is been we keep on repeating our history. We have a history of democracy. That's why I said that's why it's easy for us to conduct ourselves. But we had a failure of transition during colonial days when we move from colonial we have a failure of transition and what causes that failure fault line opportunism the fault line was tribal perceptions that's where it started it's not started today by us our generation it was started then you um 
Shout out to Joanna. Yes. UP, PPP. Then PPP, NCP. It started then. But what do you check? What, what do they have in common? Opportunism. Opportunism. PPP decided to come together to say that to be represented. What did they do? It was based on opportunity. And they, 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 they abandoned. Because all, most of these people who were selling the tribal angle, they abandoned UP. They abandoned Penjai. They went and joined Sada that they were blaming, accusing to be tribalists, the PPP they accused to be tribal. They went there and took over and they were together. They built their things and complacency happened. Corruption, opportunism made them to do that. And corruption took over. They were confident. They will never lose elections. We have this control. We will win the presidency. We will win the parliamentary. We are incumbent. Where did it lead us? We had the warning shots. 81. We did not hear that. We did not see that. We didn't do. We didn't reflect. That's why it's always good to reflect. No, we have 94. And 94 stayed that long because of, again, the dictator understand us, divisive uh, corruption, and it went on, it went on, it went on to now. You think the dictator would just have left? The dictator, you think, the, imagine the dictator just lost by 18,000 votes. What that tell us about us? That's why we should reflect and, and avoid this um, fault line and, and constitute ourselves. Again, let's come back to us, reflect on us citizens. Citizens, let us not allow to be manipulated by elites that are doing it for themselves. They don't interest, there's nobody out there saying that he is representing the interests of Mandinkas, it's a lie. Nobody out there uh, for the interest of Fulas is a lie. Nobody there interest of Wolof is a lie. Nobody there interest of any Banyun or Base or anywhere of Obakau is a lie. What their interest is, is individual. They marry the wife they want. They care, they care less what tribe they come from. They listen. The, the women married to husbands, they, they see potential in. Or, or that, that complement them. If I achieve this much as a woman, I look for a husband that complements me. If it happens to be Maninka, Jola, Sarah Hule, I don't care. To the extent now, even let it be a foreigner. I don't care. It's my happiness. They are not prejudicial to that. When they build their houses, they don't, they don't go first to build the community uh, center. They don't go first to build the hospital. They don't go first to do anything. When they build anything, it's for popularity or capital. It's for themselves. What they do, they go to Pipeline, they go to Fajara, they go to Kersen, they go to Koto, they go to Burfoot Heights. They go to where any aspir Gambian that, aspir I mean, that succeeded in making wealth will go. That's why you have that. This, go and show me the enclaves. In, 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 if you go on Burfoot Heights, see whether you have enclaves of Mandinkas, enclaves of Wolof, enclaves of uh, this thing. No. You have enclaves of what? Affluent people from different tribes. Then these are the facts we should understand. We politics should not enter in this. Yes, we do have our, because our defensive, our prejudice, we have those prejudices. We should try to clean that out of ourselves. But again, the political parties and us as citizens, how we impact civil society, wherever we can be to do that. Within political parties, we should do that. But <laughs> political parties are very important in this. That's why I ask for political parties to reform, uh, um, reflect. You know, most people, you see, that's why I like my independence. And um, I have a history of, 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 of my independence and how it helps me. You see, every political party have prejudice. Every political party have people who are prejudiced, but they don't see the prejudice of our, their party or, or themselves. They see the others. 
and they cannot even see the problem with their parties why their parties are not growing or succeeding or whatever because they are busy picking out the other people not looking after themselves it's important to realize that because of political party will end up forming governments then political party need to reform themselves need to be reflective and see these things how it is and that's every one of you every one of you now i'll give an example ghana ghana you think ghana their politics is not a primary factor this is everywhere in the, in the world especially africa but let me tell you something about Ghana. We can learn from Ghana. You see how how bad it is in Nigeria? We should not look at that. Let's look at Ghana is improving on that. And why this is happening? Ghanaian two, I mean the two main mainstream parties have realized how important the diversity is. How important inclusiveness is. They have made efforts to reach out, made efforts to open up. Let's avoid our parties to be about the leader. To have a competent leadership. Competent leadership where the leadership will come out from. And generally, they have profile of their standing bearer. They have profile. And it go to a competent congress. Not congresses that are forged in order to determine the executive. They go to competent parliament uh, congress. And both parties have been benefiting from this. Ghana have a lot of other parties. But why the this thing? And they have improved. It, any party that comes in would have to improve because of the opposition is improved. The opposition is likely to win. And the other parties, small parties, what do they do? They participate based on their strength. The region they want to control. The parliament they, parliamentary seats they want to control. The lo local government seats they want to control. The resources that they can mobilize to come to their regions. And they use the political capital to bargain for this. For their electoral representation, for their, elo I mean, uh, their impact. That's why we need to reflect on the structures. And if I say reflect on the structures, I know in most cases what people do is tokenism. Tokenism. No, we have five women. You see, when we talk about five women, I know it's not about just us. If we talk about five men, it's not about being five men. It's about the competency of those people. Not to select five men who will be loyal to the leader. We said five men who are competent, independent thinkers. That have something to contribute to challenge and to make sure the, uh, the independent the things and those five men can come from diverse backgrounds that's what we mean not tokenism in most cases it's tokenism or oh, we have a woman vice we talk about just as we talk about the competency in the men that competency of women not tokenism women it's been our culture now a oh, vice president have to be woman any woman that will just say, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Why the vice president have to be a woman? Why not the president be a woman? What, the, what, what do you have in the uh, internal democracy to determine the leadership? These are the things we should be honest about. We should be honest about it. We know it. We should reflect on this. The, if we do this better, this will be ref reflecting of who we are. Not to tell us who you are, show us who you are. These are reflections that we should do and think about Ghana. And finally, the way forward. As I said, every citizen has to reflect. I, <laughs> I reflect my consciousness, I, my journey. I am, I am approaching my mid-50s. I have a journey and I have planned my life. In anything I do, I have responsibilities, duties, I try to impact and do my best. Be it family, be it workplace, be it I mean, um, um, country, society. 
even the society I belong here, I try to make sure I have a positive impact in my local community. To be recognized as the person that will come up when called upon, that will do the right thing, that is neighborly, neighbor, that should be. My workplace, in the height of in the height of the activism I was involved, I had to reject a promotion because it's going to curtail me from doing my activism properly, because I would have to dedicate my in my job in a manner that would not allow me. I have to forgo a promotion because my priority here was not the extra I was going to get there. What I was getting was enough to, for me to manage. But I need I was needed here. That was important. But I was lucky to be brought up around an environment where the consciousness was nurtured to understand. That's what that nurtured my independentness from a child. Running around the streets late in the evening, painting out Moja J. Not even what I understand is the elder brothers I'm looking up to who are radicals are and I just think Moja J. Until I'm being a young man, getting involved in, 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 in youth projects. Going to going to um, I mean, PPP youth, this thing, agitating their youth movements or agitating their pro, I mean, youth youth weeks and stuff like that. Doing all that, getting involved in sabotaging certain things. In um, that was growing up a little more mature, creating business based on only not about the profit, but the impact that will have it use. Called Gampin Studios. Doing all that. Deciding to join the army, not because of uh, uh, a career or money or anything, to have my footprints in there. Seeing this as one of the institutions to have a footprint. And moving from there on with my conscience clear. Resigning, protest. Protest to resign out of the army. Because things were not going. I have one year left to protest and resign in on records because things were not going well. That was in 92. In two years, what I predicted happened. And I didn't want to have a, a, a hand in that. But coming into exile and do whatever for myself and so on, but continue and, and, and came into the, the, the struggle and decided to pick what I want to, to impact, my voice. But I have never, in the journey, I've never planned to have a platform, no. I just plan to come and have my voice contribute and move on. But there was a necessity to stay alone, and I stayed. Collaborate, work with people, be educated by people, make the best of friendships, make the best of relationships I have now. My best relationships are the people I knew through the struggle. Understanding can be better is the mistakes committed, the uh, things we interact with. Reflect on all the journey. Not without having a plan. Having a plan for myself. Just as I, as I see the plan and what I want for country, continue on to the journey to, uh, for country. To put that footprint to contribute to impact. We've got here now. We, 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 we took part and took out a dictator. Came and contributed. I choose. As I said, anything I do, I don't do it emotional. I don't just jump out, ah, let me go with life. I mean, no. I would measure. I would take my time. I would put my notes. I would reflect on it. I do consult people to have a balance and to try to project. Sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes emotions come out because of the person. But never for a hate of an individual, never to disrespect an individual, never for anything personal. 
but trying to create the greater good as we are not perfect mistakes do happen and wherever it's pointed at wherever I reflect and realize if it is an individual I will ask for forgiveness if it is to come out in the open to to, to um, if I, to come out in the open where I made the statement I'll come back and do that it hardly happened though. it hardly happened but whenever it is would happen we came through that journey as I said I have never tried to monetize what I do I've never tried to structure it any other way even to have a, a um, that way forward I thought where I mean to have a Facebook page I think, uh, but I, I have never even had a Facebook page it's through the support of Charles State no bro don't know what I'm Facebook uh, a separate, separate personal page and if you go, go ahead I don't even he, he created everything the passwords and everything is still Charles that did that for me I just much as I, I try to come out in part as much as possible and walk away and these are the reflections I have and I hope by sharing these personal reflections, you, every Gambian too, would do to think of how do we impact? How do you continue to create, create the greater good? How, but we have to reflect and hold ourselves accountable first. And in order to hold our institutions accountable. But as I always said, and I came and approaching to the elections, I decided to pick on things that I want to impact on, things that have not been highlighted and or agitated or ever, be the drug cartel, be the economic cartel, be, be, be I mean, everything else around that. I try to champion all this. And I know I did it well because I, I've seen the impact, I've got the feedbacks, which are very important. But again, I emphasize that was what I could do but I could not have done that without the support of the people around me support of the people that say we are still on a journey and we'll still go on a journey and that's why we need to reflect today and reflect another day but I'll tell you one thing one thing and I want Gambians to continue thinking of that Gambians are good people generally generally we are good people Let's take our time before we pass judgment in many things that are going to happen. There are many things that are going to come out. Let's just be very careful. Let's not generally just go and blame entire Gambia. For let's blame ourselves, yes, entirely. But let's just be rational in what blame do we give to the average Gambian. Let's blame ourselves as leaders. Let's blame our leaders. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's blame our institutions and hold them accountable. And know that we have a battle in front of us. Until immigration, that's when we have a new president, a new government. Inauguration, remember that. Let's try to understand our constitution. We reflect on all this, we need to reflect. Why I said Gambians are good people. The other day I have a problem with my phone. I left a message that people can get in touch via messenger. Five Gambians I don't know. I've never interacted with five, three of them men. Never interacted. I don't even know. They don't have no they have no business interest that that they would want me to, to buy me on a team. It was not in buying, genuinely. Inbox to say that, give me your account, I'll send the money for you to get a phone. Five, and not only in the diaspora, some in the Gambia. I've never interacted with, that tells a lot. And that's just the latest. I'll tell you, many times that I share something about something and people inbox me to say, anonymous, Dimalel, Dimalel is men. But, this is not only going to solve Gambia, we have to come collectively, individually to take responsibility and collectively to create a better government. Thank you very much, Gambia. And um, till we come back again, we take a moment, time away to, to observe. To observe, to wait, to see what's going to come out. Uh, very responsible and let's continue to keep the peace. Uh, people within political party structures, listen to your leaders. Follow your leaders. Be patient. 
people in civil society continue to do the good job you do. Keep your neutrality, keep your discipline, but let's continue to counsel our families and everything. It's a long battle and we have to be in it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Gandhi.